love this. Whoa. Working on the side heel thing. <laughs> Guess that's just the way of life here though, isn't it? Yeah, it sure is. <laughs> I'm laying this across the ground because we're going to bury this. I'm going to dump material off of the top up there. Um, we got one spot we got to dig out a whole bunch of material, like several hundreds, hundred yards of material. And we're going to dump it right off the edge of the road up there and build this, kind of bury this out to at least here. So, because I want that upper parking in front of the shop to come out at least another six or eight feet and so we're going to continue it around we're going to just push things off here to build that road up there if i can just get this onto it to lay down nicely then it won't it won't be raised and when we bury it over it compresses and cracks or breaks and stuff so we'll just get it to try to lay down good and then we can be in good shape but it'll be nice to finally get all this wire connected and in conduit protected instead of how we've been getting by with. Oh. Something like that. I just have to wait for it to cool down. <laughs> is that the creek yeah i like it i like the sound of the creek yeah it's nice mm -hmm. this would be nice to get done before we get may showers mm -hmm. and just not have to worry about it again huh yeah have it finally done all the way <laughs> yeah so many times it's like we get to a point and then it just runs out on us it is kind of nice that you're not doing this like before snow, you know what I mean? Yeah, rushing, like, yeah. <laughs> rushing before winter. Yeah. Like, uh, like these yeah. rack was. <laughs> <laughs> That's the life up here. Yeah. Well, as soon as the snow is gone and the soil's walkable, not muddy, I'm glad that you're wanting to th wrap this up. Oh, it needed to be done for a while now and before you get wrapped up in all the other big before projects. everything else cuts loose yeah <laughs> and everything becomes too much yeah time yeah so it doesn't sit and bother you in your mind <laughs> be able to maintain a little bit of sanity huh yeah trying very carefully to cut the pipe without cutting my wires <laughs> It is easier to glue and assemble this pipe when you don't have wires run through it already. One day we might have all of our systems built and finally just live. Think that'll be the case? No. No? Probably not. We still have a few years. We're too, too busy-minded to <laughs> say enough is enough. <laughs> 
Well, now that you're gonna start make, we're gonna start making tons of power, like this is a good upgrade to do. Yeah. A yeah, well, well necessary upgrade. Well, finally, we get this in with our breaker and everything finished here. Then we can go up into the into the battery room and install our second charge controller, which will be really, really nice because then we can finally get like to the the full efficiency of all this. Because we've been we we got these all connected, these panels and the ones up on the shed, and we got them connected last year, coming into winter. And now that we have these on the rack where they can adjust, they're so much more efficient that it's too much power for one charge controller. So now we need to separate them. And we'll be able to harvest and fill our batteries way, way faster. Now I mean, you can use your welder anytime you want. <laughs> without worrying about what time of day it is. Or... Yeah. <laughs> you want to go weld something at midnight? Go for it. Go for it. <laughs> Who cares? Who cares? I'll be sleeping, but you can do anything you want. You're putting in a couple of breakers, is that correct? It's a main breaker, yeah. Main breaker. Disconnect and, and a breaker. So that's for protections so that breaker, just like any breaker in your house or whatever, it's just, it's a circuit protection. It's to protect the wire basically. So if anything were to happen and the wires were to get damaged or if it was to overload and start to melt the wires, then the breaker will trip and disconnect there's no power going through so this way you don't burn down the property <laughs> yeah <laughs> or whatever <laughs> or burn down anything the whole mountain you know the whole mountain yeah it uh so it's a protection it's fault protection for all those things and and it's a it's a service disconnect as well so we can come to the panels kick that breaker off and it disconnects the panels from any power output. So like we'll have this breaker off when we install the new charge controller for this so that we're not sending power up to it live and hooking it up live. Oh, gotcha. And then we can just hook it up, get everything on, flip the breaker on and then that can And you'll have two on. breakers for one set of solar panels and one, and the other set yeah. of solar panels. Yeah, the other one we already installed on yesterday. the other yesterday mm -hmm. on the animal shelter. On the animal shelter. And because we, that was the easiest to connect because I knew I needed to do all this. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, well, let's put that one in and we'll separate that panel set to the one controller for now. And then we'll get this one, all this stuff finished up and connected. And then we can install the new controller and these will go to the new controller. So. Good. Yeah. You learned this when you worked for the city, right? Yeah. Yeah. Mo the basics of it, you know, I learned a lot of this doing doing power for the city as the not licensed electrician in-house employee so you're exempt from needing that and it didn't matter because the building inspector will sign off on whatever work we did so it didn't matter you know so like <laughs> uh, some of those little things i guess i guess you get away with in a small town mm -hmm. the smaller city that it was i, I did a lot of power even out on the main lines. Yeah, because he used to work on um, traffic lights. Traffic light and light pole. And we had lots of power boxes in the, like in the ball field, mm -hmm. in the soccer field and the, out in the grass, all these in the ground boxes, like irrigation boxes. And when there was outlets run inside there, and we had them all over the place. So when they did their festival, they'd set up the booths, their tents or whatever. And they'd set them up next to these boxes, pop open, and they could plug in power to have power for their booth. Conduit all in the ground, everything like that. So every year, no fail, we'd have to go in and replace several GFIs that just failed from the moisture from irrigating. So <laughs> now you're just in charge of Mount Maple Ranch power. Yep. That's it. Yep. I'm happy about that. It's arguably more work though. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. <laughs> <laughs> I need to mount that bus bar, but I can't get into it very well. I need a short screwdriver and then I can get it mounted. But it has my, my little breaker, my negative and positive bus bars, and we're good.
looks way more tidy. Yeah, I like that. Looks like it's supposed to be there that way. <laughs> Maybe we'll move that freezer out of the way so you have easier <laughs> access next time. Hopefully there's not a next time, right? That's the plan. Oh my God. Did you get it? Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh my heck, I did. Good job. I don't know how. My arm's falling asleep. Oh, but I got it. <laughs> I guess that's what happens when you're trying to be efficient with your space. <laughs> you make it impossible on yourself. Oh. So what exactly are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> just, you know, monkeying around, I guess. Mostly. I'm trying to just reconfigure some of the connections in the batteries so that I have the right sized wire. So because we have the new charge controller coming online, the I have to have battery cables for it to go directly to the batteries. And I can't use can't daisy chain the connection because the cable has to be a lot bigger to handle that much power. So what I'm doing right now is trying to just make sure that my batteries, the way that they're connected up, everything comes in good. I don't think I want to have both charge controllers coming in on the same terminals of the same bank. I'd rather them come into two different banks on opposite sides of the, of the series so that I'm not overtaxed and trying to pump it all into one battery and link through so it's coming in separately where it needs to. But I'm just having a hard time reaching everything because <laughs> of where I put everything. Why did it do that? It always does, I don't know. Like this capacitors or something. Now, charge controller. Okay, it's right over here. So this is the second one and this one will go yep. to our, from our solar panels that you just fixed up. Yep. You have the breakers off down below, right? At the solar panel? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yep. Looks like you planned this out really well. Well, yeah. Did you do it by accident? I tried to. <laughs> okay. I did try to. Is this how they kind of usually go like in a row like that? No idea how they usually do anything. Oh, <laughs> it looks right, it, you know? It looks good for me. I have no idea if there's a usually to this or not, but it's how I'm doing it. And I think it looks like it's pretty good. <laughs> battery positive, battery negative, solar positive, solar negative. I don't want to mess that up. <laughs> Red stripe, battery positive. So once we get the battery positive and negative connected onto these terminals, this thing will power up like this one is. I gotcha. And then we can, once the solar wires are connected, then we can go back to both panels and turn on the breakers and start making Start charging again. Oh, it just lit up. Yep. So the biggest safety features you have is breakers at the panels. That's yep. like the biggest. So that protects the wiring, the power from the panels 
it protects anything coming this way from there. So that gives us a protection on the wires in the circuit there. And then inside here, you know, we have breakers and trips and it has its own things for coming from, from here out. So it looks like it belongs there. Well, I wanted it to belong there. It looks like it does. So it was kind of by design. This might be asked, but I want to make sure. What is the total power that we're making? Oh. And, and also, like, why two controllers? Okay, so the array that we have down off the hill on the rack, those are just, under, I think they're 395 watt panels, and there's 12 of them. It's basically right at like 4,800 watts peak, perfect power. The panels up on the shed, on the animal shelter, um, they're 270 watt and there's 18 of them. And I don't know the number off the top of my head, but it's basically about 4,800 watts also. So combined in perfect sun and perfect conditions, we could make up to 9,600 watts. And each of these are only good for 5,600 watts. Okay. Um, so, and what we were finding was now that we've got those adjustable down there, we can get a much more efficient solar angle. It's gonna, it was gonna be way too much power for one box. And so now I'm real curious to see, it's still early enough in the afternoon that, what is it, four o'clock, five? Yeah, it's only like four. four so it's probably still early enough that we can go power up and see it won't be the peak of what we would have, but it should make pretty good power. And I bet we're going to be on the plus side of 7,000 watts. Let's go turn on some breakers. He's going to go turn on the breaker up at the animal shelter. And I'm going to go upstairs and see what it's doing. Okay, so this is the one for the Thanks, animal shelter. Let's do a close up and see. Okay, turn it on. There it goes. Okay, that one good? Yep. What are we making right now? Uh, about 2,000 plus watts. About 2,000 plus, not bad considering it's hazy. Yeah, I agree. All right, I'll go down and hit the other one. Okay. Oh yeah, look at this one, it's actually at 23, almost 24. Oh, and now that one's on. And this is in the evening, so this is evening sun. Well? Yeah. Good there? Yeah, no crack, pop, or pop or anything. <laughs> That's good, no smoke. No smoke, <laughs> no fires. No, no fireworks. No fireworks. <laughs> yeah, it, it's interesting this one came on and this one lowered because it was about 23. And now this one's 23 and this one's about 19. Well, it's, it's hazy out there and there's clouds kind of fading in and out too. Oh, in and out. Yeah, but, and that'll make a difference. But that gives you kind of an idea of the how much more efficient the ones off the hill are than the one on the shed. It's not a substantial difference, really. Well, again, now you can come and weld something in the middle of the night <laughs> if you wanted to. Well, maybe. Okay. Cool. Good job. Back in business. Yep. Time to clean up and yep. move on to the next project. Yeah. Yep.